Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a battle beers between uh, Weizenbach. And so Weizenbach is a pretty interesting style. It is a traditional style, or relatively traditional. I think it's uh, early 1900s. Uh, the first one produced was from uh, Schneiderweiss. So uh, Schneiderweiss Aventinus is great beer. Definitely check that one out. But that is a dark Weizenbach. So this is a Weizenbach, so it's a wheat Bach, uh, 6.5 to 9%. It is pretty much a weeded Doppelbach Imperial Weizen beer and so, or uh, Imperial Wheat Ale in the uh, German family, but it's a, yeah, ale instead of lager. So, uh, pretty fun beer. And so, this is a crazy one. I found this on the shelf. Um, studying for BJCP, you're going to see a lot of examples of beers that just like are mystical, that just like don't exist because like they just don't sit on the shelf. And I saw this one on the shelf. I was like, wow. Um, it's like one of those crazy things where you just only read about and you find on the shelf, you're like, oh man, that's the thing. And so there's um, multiple, um, I think I think the only commercial example you can maybe buy is Schneiderweiss Aventinos, which is the dark version. Pale, there's literally two in that category. And there's uh, Weinschiffaner uh, Vitus, and then there's Plunk, Heller Weizenbach. And so this is award winning. You can see all these medals. Um, it got gold in 2002 for the style. Heller Weizenbach, so pale uh, Weizenbach. There's also Dunkel Weizenbach, which is dark. Uh, so gold 2002, bronze 2004, gold 2006, gold 2008, uh, gold 2010, gold 2012, silver 2016, uh, bronze 2018. So absolutely crazy. This is Bavarian traditional. Uh, this is imported by B United in Oxford, Connecticut. So that is attached to um, OEC, so it's a distributor brewery kind of connection going on there. And what they do is just send a ton of like tankards of beer and they can them in the US. So um, I did actually have this once and it's actually in very poor condition, even though it's quite fresh. No can at the end of that one, but um, hopefully it's delicious. We'll see. And wow. So one poured with like a lot more vigor of home foam. And let's see between these two. Yeah, this one has a much rockier head showing possible signs of oxidation. This one's a uniform kind of medium bubble head to it. Um, this one's definitely paler. This one comes in like, it's got yeast in it. It's got this like murky kind of like um, medium deep gold color. This one's quite pale. This one is straight up like gold color. So let's dig into this one first. Bananas. A little bit of like chemical thing going on, a little bit of like acetone. Some of that like phenolic, so that's like that. Acetonian, maybe some like clove in there too. Get the nice wheat in there. Oh, this one's much vibrant, uh, more aroma. This perfumey, it's got less, it's like if you can make banana run since food perfume, it has that thing going on. It doesn't have an acetony kind of thing. The head just like lasts a lot better, but let's try this one first. Okay. That one works a little bit better. Uh, we did some blind taste tests with uh, Brian Reed. Um, weird beer though. Banana up front, quite dry. Mm -hmm. Send some of the oxidation, yeah. So even Brian Reed got this one wrong um, and he does it full blind. So we, what we do is we do a Zoom class with a bunch of us certified Cicerones and we get four choices. He tries to do it full blind and just name the style just like Master Cicerone. He got this one wrong. He got it as like some weird version of a vice beer. And this beer is big. I mean, this is this beer sits at 7.9. So compared to a Vine Chiffon, which would be like somewhere around like 5%. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, this beer is like much bigger, five to 8% basically. And it doesn't drink like that. Banana-y, dry. I feel like the example I had might have sent in some heat or it was shipped with some heat and definitely not oxidized. It just tasted like a very oxidized bland wheat beer or German wheat beer because it has that banana, banana phenolic. Mm. Banana ester with some of the phenolics. Pretty decent beer though. Clean, it's a little bit of that banana runt but also a little bit of ripe and banana. Nice wheat body to it. Not bad. You know, it's got a little bit of creaminess to it. It's almost like bananas foster in the glass, yeah. Hmm, this one on the other hand is a lot cleaner. A lot less banana forward. You get all the other parts. You get the Weinstein yeast. So for me, it's strange, but it's almost like 
a little bit of like vit beer in here. There's that kind of like um, banana, but almost like like orange peel, orange peel, a little, just a spritz, a little bit of orange in there. So strange, I get a little bit of like orangey, kind of like other kind of fruity esters in here. Nice and dry too. But for me, like, yeah, as I wait, there's that nice twang of just like when you eat a sandwich or a piece of bread and a little bread just sits in the back of your mouth and you get that doughiness and it sort of sits there. That kind of extra malt character drives in this beer. Wonderful carbonation driving in this beer as well, unlike this one, right? Mmm, yeah. It's like baked banana bread, but not the sweet version. If you literally just had a regular white bread baked with some baked parts of banana in there with a little bit of orange zest, that's what's really what this beer tastes like. That's just some spice as well. So traditionally you have some clove, um, phenolics in here. But this is a full breadiness. There's just that chew, it's just malt that just wraps it on the palate versus here. It doesn't have the carbonation. A lot drier of beer. I definitely sense some oxidation on the back end too. I'm fortunate, you know, sent wonderful tankards of this beer all, all the way over to the US. And this beer probably is not the best state. You know, this easily drinks better than that. Um, I'm sure at a better state, this <laughs> wins that many world beer. I mean, world beer cups is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. So if you find this one, try out the um, uh, Planck Bia uh, Hello Weissenbach. But if you want a true version, get the Vitas. And then if you want to bump it up even more, get the um, uh, Schneider Weiss Aventinus. Oh, is that a beautiful beer? You get all these beautiful kind of brandy notes, but it's a dark version. So you get more of that Meyer reaction. There's more of that Munich malt in there. So Munich can give that more sexy kind of like actual banana bread kind of thing going on. That beer. Commercially, yeah, has to be the most banana bready, that kind of like spiced, you know, Christmassy kind of like banana fruity kind of thing going on. It's quite light and delicious. Still, in my opinion, one of the best uh, German beers out there, uh, at least shelf wise. I mean, for me, I, I really like, uh, have grown to like, you know, Weinstein and Hefe Weiss beer, but this Imperial version, quite good. This one's 7.7, so they're right the same ABV, but man. It's not night and day, they're both banana-y, but this one leans sweeter. It has that like weird, slightly oxidized, maybe possibly oxidizing, maybe it's just what it tastes like. But this one tastes fresh, vibrant, full malt, versus this one's just like, that's good, right? And this one is, you know, bottle condition, uh, bottle condition? Mm. I don't know if the beer is bottle condition, possibly, but more carbonation for sure. It's just a cleaner beer, more precise and pretty. So that's a battle beer right here. Fun one though. I mean, I just remember like going to the shelf. I was like, oh my God. I mean, this is a geeky BJC piece. That's just a certain thing where you just find a beer that's like, I only read about this before. And uh, you find one of the examples that, um, you know, there's certain versions of beers that you, uh, styles of beer that, you know, you can find. And then some, some of those examples you can't find because they're traditionally just Belgian only, Britain only, you know, Germany only. Um, but hey, cool to find one of that, like, especially the Czech lagers. Like those literally there's probably only like Budvar and uh, Pilsner Quelle that comes here, but kind of, you can't, I mean, Kudnas Rimave doesn't exist anymore. And like, you know, it's fun breweries that you wish you get to try, but you'd have to go to Prague uh, or go to the Czech Republic to try some of these beers, uh, especially British ones too. There's like, just names of beers that I memorize. And I'm like, ah, I'm never gonna try the beer ever. Um, <laughs> you know, we got Sam Smith, Fuller's, blah, blah. So um, yeah, fun stuff. So uh, try it out. Fun one. Um, oof. You know what would be fun? This might actually be pretty good. Because this one's so clean and precise, and this one's a little bit more fat in the sense that it's like just more banana y and like tame, or banana y and lame, like it's just bananas. It makes more sense. It's prettier. But I honestly think I'd prefer this one just straight up. Because now you've just like diluted the, the 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 wonderful moments of this beer into this beer. So I got stuff to do. I'm gonna um, tell you guys fun stuff. Uh, try out some shelfies. Uh, again, recommend Weinstein Vitas, one of the best shelfies out there. Um, you know, this for me is solid. It's like you know, not like mid 90s at best, or, or in a good way. So until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.